who's been watching or reading Snappy Tech will know that this time last year I actually owned a OnePlus One and I acquired this around that time, my LG G Watch R. So, um, and anyone who's been watching for the last few weeks will know that I recently acquired one of these. A Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge with a beautiful skin if I do say so myself. So I got this a couple of weeks ago and the, the reason I bought a OnePlus One was very different to the reason I bought the S7 Edge. I bought the OnePlus One because it was the best Android phone you could get in terms of value for money and it was an upgrade over my S3 at the time which was in dire need of an, of, of an upgrade. On the other hand, the reason I bought an LG G Watch R was because it was my personal favourite smartwatch of the moment. And to be fair, it's still up there. I really like Android Wear. And in terms of Android Wear smartwatches in particular, this is probably still up there with one of my favourites. I like the fact that it's black. I have this nice custom metal band on it, which I actually bought off Amazon for like £20 and is great. And I just love having it on. It's got the always on screen, which I really like. And it just feels like a watch. I've worn this basically every day since I got it, right? And it's, I, I used to wear a watch before it, and this is basically the same size as that watch. And it's just something that I've grown used to having on. There have been like two, maybe three days in total where I haven't worn this watch since getting it. And that's been because I haven't put it on due to the fact that I, I either haven't left the house or I just haven't been feeling well and therefore didn't even leave my bed, for example. There hasn't been an occasion where I've left the house and not put on my watch. When I got this phone, there was a completely different mindset behind it. I wanted the S7 Edge because I believed, and I still believe, it's the best phone on the market. Rivaled maybe by the LG G5, but that I think is um, more to personal preference than which one is objectively better. The removable battery is definitely a great plus for the G5, but I feel like this just feels a lot sleeker. It's sort of that curved edge I really like and it just, it, it feels different in the hand and I prefer the look of this phone as well, especially with that skin. I'm sorry, it's just so great. So when I bought the phone a few weeks ago, I also said to my parents that I wanted to buy a Galaxy Gear S2 or a Samsung Gear S2, whatever they're called. But the reason I wanted to buy the Gear, I want to buy the Gear S2, should I say, is because I feel like that has taken the throne for best smartwatch. It is, at least hardware wise, it is the most elegant smartwatch I've seen to date. And I really like the look of it. Now, whether I do end up buying an S2, a Gear 2 or I wait for a Gear 3, we're yet to know. But um, you'll, you'll find out because I'll be unboxing one or the other in the coming months. Maybe I'll unbox both, who knows. Basically, long story short, it got me thinking, you know, because a year ago I had a OnePlus phone and an LG watch because I believe they were the best in the market at that time, or at least for my budget in terms of phone and in general in terms of watch. And when I mentioned what I was going to get a watch, a Samsung watch, my parents joked that I was becoming a Samsung fanboy as such, right? So I used to know an S3, but everyone in my family, oh, quick note, everyone in my family is actually, are actually Apple users. Something I constantly ridicule them for. But, um, but yeah, so they joked that I was becoming a Samsung fanboy. And I kind of stopped for a second and I thought, well, I'm not. Because in my opinion, at least, I'm buying what I believe is best on the market. That combination of Samsung hardware is, potential, is potentially the best phone and best smartwatch you can actually buy on the market as a combination and as two individuals. I feel like if you were going in and saying, okay, without thinking of brand, right? Remove all branding, which phone do you want most? I think most people would levitate towards an S7. And it's a similar thing with a watch, the kind of the spinning to like go through the menus and things. It's just so much more intuitive due to the fact that it's not sort of being broadcast to all kinds of Android Wear, right? So many people complain about the um, 
fragmentation between Android devices. And there's a similar thing with Android Wear, right? You never quite know the size or the shape of a screen. Whereas because Samsung knew that their watch was going to be round and they were going to impl implement this round scroller, the entire watch is designed with roundness in mind. And I think it, it might be a mistake, but I think it's not. And it made me realize that Samsung have really hit a stride. When Samsung announced the S5, I didn't want to go near that thing with a barge pole. I, I was looking at it as an S3 owner going, I'm kind of glad I have this S3 because I have freedom of ROMs and I can unlock my bootloader and a bunch of sort of techie stuff, which I haven't done with my S7 yet, actually. I've, I've slightly looked into it and I might do so later. But it was one of those things where I want, I bought the S3 because I thought it was the best phone at the time. And when I bought the OnePlus One because it was the best phone on my budget at the time. And when I bought the S7 because it was, it is the best phone right now. So it, there isn't sort of a dedication to one brand here. It is, well, apart from the fact that it's anything but Apple. In, even though it's taken me like roughly eight minutes to get to this point, the point I'm trying to get across is Samsung have really hit their stride. Samsung are at a point where they're producing probably the best phone on market and probably the best smartwatch on the market. And they've had sales rate, phone sales jump by like 20 million or something or 10 million sales, something like that in the same period that Apple's dropped 10 or 20 million or again something like that so there there is sort of this recognition coming from it as well and I think it, it is very possible that Samsung sort of slowly overtake everyone I was looking at stats um, a couple of days ago due to a discussion I was having and something like 35% of all phones in Germany are Samsung, 35 or 40% related. And it's about half that for Apple. It does seem that Samsung are at the point where, it's, it's not to say that they were struggling before, but they have a huge future ahead of them. And hopefully, hopefully, they keep that up and they bring more to the table and the whole ethos behind the S7, I think it's different to the iPhones. iPhone is as thin as we can get it at, the, at sort of all expense, at any expense, right? Whether it's dropping the headphone jack and giving it a tiny battery. That thing, battery is tiny for any of the iPhones if you look at them. Whether it be hardware features, right? NFC was only introduced last year, but even then it's locked down to exclusively Apple Pay. NFC has been a was a thing on the S3, which is now a four-year-old device, and has been something I've been using almost religiously for four years. In fact, when the OnePlus 2 came out, the reason I didn't upgrade to it was because it didn't have NFC built in. It's one of those things where there are certain features I've come to expect from a smartphone, and Apple seems to drop all of them in favor of just pursuing that one millimeter thinner. And I think sooner or later, surely they're going to struggle. Anyway, guys, that was just my opinion, how I've been feeling about this whole Apple Samsung fiasco. I say fiasco, this whole argument. And sort of, I don't know, I feel like Samsung have really stepped it up a notch. Anyway. If you want to see a previous video, click up there. It is the vlog from the weekend. It's like 40 minutes long. It was loads of fun. Do check it out. The National Museum of Computing and Brands Hatch. Really great time. Um, the Aston Martin Vulcan was there. Vulcan, however you pronounce it. And then click up here for a random video. But this time I'm actually going to tell you what the random video is. It is my review of the S7 Edge purely because I think it is really topical in this situation. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.